the book of Ruth. This book is actually set back in the period of Jephthah or Samson in the period of the Judges, which of course is a very dark period. And this book, of course, is a beautiful story of love, loyalty, and protection. The story begins as an otherwise unknown family who live in Bethlehem, they're Judahites, they sojourn or go live in the land of Moab. The reason they do that is because of a famine in the time uh, that they were living in Bethlehem. Well, as 10 years pass, we're told that these two Israelite boys marry Moabite women. Uh, is that right to do? Well, there's a lot of intermarriage uh, apparently going on at this time, as we have seen. And um, nothing is necessarily wrong in the, in the flow of the story as it's being told. What does happen and is vital, of course, to the story is that this man, the husband, unfortunately dies. His name is Elimelech. Well, even worse, these two boys, Kilion and Malon are their names, they die as well. And so what we have is three women, uh, a, a wife, an unmarried woman and her two daughters-in-law are economically defenseless in this kind of a social situation. So what this woman decides to do, her name is Naomi. She comes back to her hometown of Bethlehem and uh, introduces, of course, herself to her friends and says, God has been um, hard on me. Now, again, when we talk like that or hear those kind of words, understand that in that world, uh, we often think of God being behind things, right? That God was behind it all, we say. Well, they reverse the order in the ancient world, and Israelites especially. God got first billing for everything, and natural processes got second billing. So when she comes back to her hometown, she says, God has dealt with me in such and such a way. And she's just being honest. And that, of course, is losing all three men in her life. Before leaving town, or Moab, she tells both of these Moabite girls to stay there. Just stay with your family, stay with your mother, because they can arrange uh, remarriage for you. One of them, Orpah, says, okay, I will. But the other girl, her name is Ruth. She comes with her mother-in-law, and that becomes now our story, that a, that a unmarried or widowed woman and her daughter-in-law are now in Bethlehem. The way our, our social structure of, is, is set up at this time is that tribes are composed of clans, and clans then are composed of families. The family, of course, of Naomi has been um, decimated. So she is really depending, when she comes back to Bethlehem, on being supported by her clan. And what happens is, and in 2-3 it says, she chanced her chance. Well, again, that, that, that idea is meaning kind of behind the scenes that God is at work. And Ruth goes to glean in the field of a man who just happens to be well off. His name is Boaz. He actually is a clansman, a, a, a member of the clan of the family of Elimelech. That was the gentleman that died over here. Naomi recognizes that, and so she tells Ruth, this is your best chance of marriage and of supporting both yourself and even me in the future. Well, Boaz, this is, and several things are happening at once. Boaz is impressed by Ruth's diligence and generosity and loyalty to her mother-in-law. Uh, Naomi recognizes a, a, a possible love story here, so she arranges for Ruth to propose, as it were, the idea of marriage to Boaz on the threshing room village, or the village thresh, threshing room floor one evening. Um, it's, it's an above the board kind of idea, and, and Boaz realizes that Ruth wants marriage. He's honored by that, and he goes to arrange it. As it were, or as it is, he recognizes, Boaz does, that there is another man in the clan who is closer to the family than he is. So he tells this man, he's never named, you actually have first dibs, first right to marry Ruth and to uh, give her children and, uh, and start her family. The problem, and of course both men realize this as they're describing this, 
is that, and we shouldn't call it a problem, but just a reality, that the child that potentially, or children that come with Ruth, would not be this man's inheritance. Because remember, she was married to Malon, who is the son of Elimelech. This boy's inheritance rights would go through a deceased man, but it would go back to this family and not this man's family. In other words, if you marry Ruth, it's going to cost you a good deal of money. And that's the conversation that Boaz and this man have. The man says, well, count me out. I can't afford that. And so Boaz and Ruth are married. And of course, the story ends that their, child is, uh, their child's name is Obed. Obed begets Jesse, who of course is the father of David. So now we are ready for Samuel, our next book. Uh, one other great uh, point of this wonderful story, of course, is that way back in Genesis 12, verse 3, we're told that God told Abraham, you will bless the world. Well, what better picture of a, an Israelite blessing the world, someone who had no business, in a sense, in the physical sense of being blessed. God has taken care of this Moabite girl through the marriage of an Israelite man, even giving her the right to be uh, the grandmother of King David. Thank you.